In 2017, I was a mother to two boys, three and one. They were literally the apples to my eyes. They captured, they captured my heart every day and made me feel like I'm the most special queen in the world. They made me feel like a unicorn mom. When I felt stressed at work, all I needed was to touch the home button of my iPhone to see their smiles, and in that instant, they brought me back out of my head and into my heart. They were, and are still, a large part of why I come home at the, day, at the end of the day, what motivates and encourages me to be the best woman I could be. As a long female, growing up in a reality where my brothers were seen as superior, regardless of my accomplishments, and women were seen as a form of support to help their male counterparts <coughs> reach their best potential, I knew from the day I found out I was having my first boy, that I would play an integral piece in their view of how to treat women, mm -hmm. how to be with women. And boy, did I want that. <laughs> I preached to each and every person reading my Facebook feed and to my husband about how I truly got to impact the mom community. I say that I have boys, and I get to be a part of raising them to become young mom men would give all women a space at the table, regardless if there were available chairs. I also get to mold them to understand that a mom woman is worthy and deserving of everything a mom man could have. If she wanted to learn how to eat, uh, how to be a big home and negotiate a wedding to success, she could do that. If she wanted to beat the drum of the funeral, she would jump late to the funeral songs that would send the dying spirit to their final home, she would have that chance. If she wanted to be the clan leader, instead of the clan leader's wife, that opportunity would be honored to her because there would be two less misogynistic men sitting at the table, blocking her self-worth and her potential. Yeah. <laughs> Since having my first son in 2014 and welcoming my second son in 2016, I have had countless conversations with my husband about how he played the most crucial role in changing that view for my two young sons. Because I identified with him. Because they watched him. They learned from his composure when he's upset. The tone in his voice when addressing their mother after returning from a stressful day of work the language she used to describe the women. And even on days when I knew I was wrong in the conflict, I got to say, honey, they're watching you. You better think twice about what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> about the same time last year, I started thinking, I want a little girl. I think I'm ready for the experience. Before then, I tell my sisters that Perhaps the Ngo Yang hadn't given me a girl because I needed to get off my high horse, come down to earth, and learn to appreciate the men in my life. <clears throat> Perhaps I am too much of a feminist, and so my papers gave me boys first to teach me to love my male counterparts. But there was a small, secret, philosophical part of me that would whisper, Cindy, you are scared to raise a daughter. So even though you want to be Dean, you weren't quite ready to face your own issues with bringing a daughter into your world. But I would just shove it far and deep. <clears throat> Last March, my husband and I found ourselves with a positive pregnancy test. I remember sitting in the bathroom, looking down at this plastic tube and thinking, this is it. And that small voice said, are you ready? And I told to shut up. <laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy this moment. As my heart pounded with the anxiety of this could be my girl, and now I won't have an excuse for how I interact with my husband. <laughs> the pregnancy progress went forward as planned. Everyone told me I was having a girl. Everyone banked on me, me being the dad that would bring the first girl to a male-dominant family. <laughs> 
anxious heart and an idiotic voice kept teasing, Cindy, you are going to have to pay your beer because this is your daughter. But I sat in denial. And I denied that possibility, despite my empath heart feeling and knowing that this was going to be my daughter. I denied it up to the 18th week, the week in which I would find myself sitting at the doctor's office with my husband next to me. It was the day of the ultrasound that would tell if the little one growing in my belly had little male parts or little female parts. I remember sitting in that little black chair next to my husband and seeing the look of anticipation on his face. I knew his anticipation was for different reasons. All he was thinking about was wanting a girl because he and his family had been so neglected from the female energy for far too long. <laughs> around the reality that my world may significantly change. Things that once did not matter to me may matter so much more. <coughs> and I would suddenly have to become excessively more mindful of my words, my interactions, my choices, my actions, my thoughts. I remembered my husband smiling at me and squeezing my hand. And then the door cracked. And like slow motion, the nurse in the gray scrubs called, Cindy. At least that's what it sounded like. <laughs> I picked up my, head, my bag, and my husband followed, and <coughs> we walked down the hall. I recalled examining the cute and adorable black and white baby pictures hanging on the walls. Little boys and girls, all looking so young and innocent, sleeping in the palms of hands, wearing little flowers on their heads. I remember thinking to myself, if I have a girl, does she have to wear bows and flowers? <laughs> <laughs> what if she doesn't care for that? What if she wants to play with toy trucks and race cars like the brothers? That's fine, right? This way, said the nurse in her sweet little pleasant customer service voice. <laughs> we entered the darkened room. Please remember to turn off all electronics and your sonographer will be with you shortly. I complied and laid on the bed. I examined the screen sitting in front of me, a huge blow up of what would be the tiny being living inside of me. The sonographer walked in. I laid her calmly as she squeezed warm petroleum jelly onto my stomach. She proceeded to poke, push, and prod while taking countless photos, little black and gray and white photos, labeling feet, femurs, hands, toes. But another sonographer walked in and completed the rest of the old She asked would you like to know the sex? Or would you like to do a gender reveal? And I said, no, I can't wait. What do you have right now? Two boys. Are you hoping for a girl? Yes, I said. Some more poking and prying. Come on, little one, she said. I focused on the screen. I could tell this was the big reveal. The little legs outstretched, a little wiggle here and there. Well, she said, it's not extremely clear. And then I said, I don't know what those are, but for sure they are not little boy parts. We're pretty aware of what little boy parts look like at this point. <coughs> she laughed and then replied, Good job, Dad, it's a girl. I recalled drowning out everything that followed as I took in that very moment to process what I heard. I was having a girl. The girl. The girl had arrived. And the lady just congratulated the father like he didn't need a mother to bring my daughter. <laughs>
Across social media, women were posting, hashtag, he assaulted me too. Actresses were blacked to the Golden Globes to send the message that time's up. We will be silent with harassment no more. All female victims of domestic violence and patriarchal oppression were reuniting with, we will no longer hold shande. And young, long women were debating whether or not right prices determine their self-worth. How do I build within you the deep appreciation for your sex, your gender, your culture, your her heritage, the papers that have been given to you? It wasn't too long ago when my mother lied on her deathbed and asked her children to give her a pen and paper when she passes so that she may ask to reincarnate as a boy. So that she can go to school like her brothers because that was the one thing she had always wished for. How do I protect you? The life you grow. Because of all things, that is what you were born to do. In November 2018, I welcomed my girl into the world. I learned in the last two months that I can't avoid pink. <laughs> with bows and flowers in her hair. <clears throat> and that I still don't have the answers to those questions. But, <clears throat> let me go outside. I will tell you this. I'm here too. And you're going to stumble and fall. You're going to see in your knees. Your heart is going to break. The world may be cruel, men and boys might hurt you, girls might bully you, and you may still be having to fight for everything that you deserve. But big girl, I am your mother. I will show you how to survive, how to live, how to love everything that you are, and how to have Thank you.